hello guys and welcome to a brand new video so today i'm here with another fgo video and finally i'm going to react to uh fate grand order the first order the anime that has come out uh, a long time ago now <laughs> it's actually weird that i never saw this <laughs> like i've played fate grand order i've like seen most of the stuff fate related but i've not seen this so yeah i'm gonna check this out and uh, i think there is another ova which is called uh, Fate Grand Order Lost Room or something like that, which I'm probably going to react to next week, which I, again, I've also not seen. So these two, like, you know, I'm going to react to and I'm, I'm, I think like Camelot is also coming out within a few weeks. And after it comes out, I'll also probably react to that. I'll definitely react to that as well. So like, you know, like the upcoming few weeks will be like filled with uh, reactions like this, like Fate Grand Order related. Like I usually put out one, at least one FGO related video every week, uh, FGO or Fate related video every week. So yeah, this upcoming week, it'll probably be like this. So yeah, that will be it. Okay, so um, it's been a long time I've played Fate Grand Order, the first singularity, four years four years ago i've been playing fate grand order for four years so i think i've forgotten most of the stuff that the first singularity had i only remember the characters you know uh and uh who we had to fight with i remember kukul in caster and i think saber altar was also there that's all i remember and everything else is like gone like i can't don't even remember i remember um what was her name i forgot um the girl uh, i forgot her name <laughs> the the white-haired girl the, the the director of whatever olga mari yeah i remember it took me a while to actually remember her olga mari you know i remember her and lev as well so small little stuff i remember but most of the things are gone out out of my head so yeah it'll be kind of like you know refreshing my memory so yeah without further ado let's get started and uh, this will be my reaction to fate grand order the first order anime so i'll be putting in the subtitles and the timer over here sync it to whichever is your preference and let's get started and this is a timer reaction because of copyright so yeah sync your video to my video and uh like you know like see my reaction alongside it so anyways um let's get started so here's the countdown three two one go hmm all right here we go <clears throat> Shiva Lens. There you go, Olga. Whoa, Lev's voice actor is Gintoki's voice actor? Hmm. Okay, this is where it starts. <laughs> Our grand adventure of <laughs> my god, saving worlds and singularities and you know everything. Oh, there, my, there she is. Hmm. <clears throat> <laughs> Foe is here as well. Foe kind of acts like a dog, like... I think she's like a squirrel or a dog. Oh. Well, there he is. It's Fujimaru. <laughs> Licking. <laughs> All right. I, I, I kind of forgot about this part completely. 
Caldias. Damn. <laughs> Little did I know what gacha hell I'm getting into <laughs> when I started the game. <laughs> oh my god. Alright. Four sun. <laughs> Squirrel, okay. <laughs> wow. What? <laughs> Yeah. Senpai? <laughs> Senpai? <laughs> I was qualified to make a contract with a server. Somebody from here. Okay, this is interesting because when I played this part, I had no idea what the hell everything was. So seeing everything again, I can, I'm able to understand a lot of things more now. Yeah, this is a build truck. Yeah. Global environmental model, Caldeas. Get it. So, as long as the light of another hundred years, okay. Civilization will come to an end. 2016 they told everything in the game but as i said i was i forgot because i revealed new abnormality spatial singularity f suburban ah uh, it's fuyuki Oh, Spiritons and send them back to the past to intervene in certain events. Time travel. All right. <laughs> yeah, you'll be a time traveler. Amritska Fujimaru. <laughs> well. Yeah, because that's literally her age, two years. <laughs> there you go. Oh boy, <laughs> this guy. <laughs> 
I, I almost I completely forgot about a lot of things about this guy. 48. Level liner. <laughs> okay. Human. Seems human. Interesting. Like, this makes really sense now that I think about it. Like, you know, like, we know who Romani is. We know who Leonardo da Vinci is. So, the, the way she says this, this is like a big spoiler, isn't it? Not a spoiler, but like a big foreshadowing. Like who Romani actually is, if you actually think about it like that. But um, Olga Mary is a human, so. Anyways, okay. Damn. Wait on red. Oh, there's a <laughs> there's a female Gudako. What the hell? My god. Yeah, that's just her. Um Oh no. <laughs> Good out. Um Wakey wakey. Ugh! Damn, Gudako got accepted by the Gudao. Sad. <laughs> you're, you're suspended. Lineage. Yeah. Yeah, those are the, the those the seven ones. Um. Um. What was the name? I forgot. Um. Cryptos, the cryptos. I, I, I. It... Hmm. Yeah, it's it's been for like you know like from the beginning of her life she has been here. So she has not seen anything other than this scenery. <laughs> oh, Roman is here. <laughs> well, he's already in. And this is my room. Hookie hangout. <laughs> hmm. 
Yeah, unfortunately he's been thrown out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but unfortunately <gasps> Oh Oh <laughs> Mood softens up too much All right. Oops. Oh. Hmm. hmm. Yeah, look at the smirk. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, because it's 18. Created the telescope to observe Caldeus. Not Shiva, it's Sheba, isn't it? Like I, at the beginning, I was kind of confused. I was like, "What the hell? What's Shiva?" It's Sheba. Hmm. Huh. <laughs> Well, here we go. Fire. Okay. Well. Yeah. Damn. Wow, now okay, it's interesting to see the interior of Caldia like this, you know? Like we've always seen it in the in games and the backgrounds only. Still pictures. So Well, there. Yeah. Oh, damn. Yeah, those are all the the pods. Fuyuki Japan. Two thousand four. Oh. Oh. 
اه دشيت كام اه My god it's hot Oh because of the fire yeah And here we go It's changed Survival of the human race or not? Cannot be confirmed. There we go. Okay. Hmm. My god. Oh, this is how he gets selected. All right. Yeah. And he gets selected here. Okay. Wait. Didn't they make a contract first and then get reshipped? Okay, I I think I yeah i forgot this portion completely so they got ray shifted first and then they <laughs> this is for you isn't it god it's dark i can't see anything yeah it is for you <clears throat> Oh. My, my God, what the? Oh, wait. Ah, uh, there she is. Wait, who's this? This is not Arthur. Okay, I completely forgot about everything, it seems, about this. Wait a minute, was he in the first singularity? I forgot a complete... Oh yeah, he was, most probably. And then, there he is, there's Kuhulin. Damn! <laughs> but 
Well, there is Olga. And I think because he was holding Marshall's hand at that time, the contract got uh, forged. Oh, the, bone, the skeletons. <laughs> oh boy, I remember this. Well, we need more materials for ascension, so... <laughs> well... They're like, ha ha ha! Oh boy. Well, nice, my God. Damn. All right. Yep. Oh. Oh, Galahad. Okay, I was... Okay, I was thinking, like, which servant is she talking about? And then I realized this is Galahad. Okay. <laughs> yep. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, about that. Yeah, they're all still. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, okay. I kind of forgot. When does Da Vinci come? Hmm. 
Okay. Yeah. Well. Okay. Is this is this Archer? Yeah, it must be. Oh, interesting. Oh, so that's, but this is a parallel world. So that's why Kuhulin is a caster over here. I think I'm going to talk about this later on. Like, whoa, what the hell? Oh, I'll come back to this again later on. So this is like a parallel world of the Fuyuki we know of. Because Kuhulin is a caster here. Oops. What? Don't touch it please. Yeah. Oh! Is this media? Oh no no, is this writer? Is this Medusa? I think it is Medusa. Wait a minute, who the? Yeah, it is Medusa, it's Shinji. Oh my god. Yep, that's Medusa or Gorgon. I think you can call her Gorgon here or maybe not. Oh, wow, like I completely forgot all of this. Oh, well, there you go, Shinji. I wonder what class she is. Okay. Oh, she's a lancer. Wow, Medusa Lance are interesting. Well, we already have Medusa Lily, so. Oh my God, here we go. Interesting that she can make her um, you know, uh, change her snakes into chains. And she also has her mystic eyes. Okay, here we are. 
<laughs> there he is. Oh. I've always wondered why did they make who will in caster a one star? He's a one star, isn't he? <laughs> Temporary contract. Damn, I, I really forgot all of this. Everything is coming back now. Okay, well. Damn, a caster is... Up, oh, fell into the trap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, it's very interesting, like, we know, like, like, you know, like, now that we've played the Lost Spells, we know, like, I think, like, they said something about runes being the ultimate form of magic or something, and, like, Kuhulin Caster was, like, we have, like, you know, we've been already introduced to this from Singularity F, and that really, that means that Kuhulin Caster is very strong, like, he is capable of using runes. So yeah, I'm I'm actually I'm actually realizing this now. As I was saying, why is he a one star? <laughs> well, this scene is very remind. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Only survivor. Oh. Only servants remained. Yeah, there you go, Saber Altar. Archer, Lancer. Okay, who's this? Rider? We know Berserker. And that's Assassin, we know her. Hassan. I wonder who the Rider is. Like, I've not seen him before. Oh. Hmm.
All right. Archer and Saber. <laughs> yeah. So all the masters are dead here. So I'm guessing this universe version of Shiro, Rin, Sakura, they're all gone. Hmm. <laughs> what? Oh. What happened to her? What? Oh, okay. Oh, that's okay. And he does. She doesn't remember who the servant is who fused with her. <laughs> okay yeah talking about you hmm oh Okay. Oh, wait, we're in the school. <laughs> oh, boy. What was the name? I forgot the name of the school. Um, Shiro School. Shiro Rin Taiga Sakura. Yeah. All right. Wait, she's making a barrier, I think.
Yep. I'm sure she knows. Yeah, it's Arta and Dragon. Ooh. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting to like like see this now. Like we know who Mash is contracted with, Galahad. Hmm. Oh boy, it's interesting to see that, yeah, like, both of them, like, Arthur and, like, you know, their fight, both of them are connected to the round table, so. Anyways. Yeah. Half natural, half artificial. Oh! Disciple, oh, is this Archer? Yup, there he is! Oh! Damn. Yeah. Uh, as, as an archer, he's very good at humongous long range but you know in in the middle range i think caster is a lot more proficient because he can just shoot fireballs at him mid range fight it's it's completely in caster's uh, advantage oh boy here we go but close range fight definitely uh. Arthur is going to win. Oh boy, here we go. Oh, but she talks here. Hmm. Damn, that looks cool. Oh, oh, look at that arrow. Oh, boy, I'm waiting for Kuhulin's Noble Phantasm. That was a... Okay. Oh! Oh my god!
mentor mentor who is he talking about Okay, here we go. Oh! It's a barrier, yeah. Yeah, this is a bit too much. Oh. Yeah, she has to protect him. Yeah. Okay. And Saber is not even trying here. It's just... Oh. Oh no. She's unleashing her noble phantasm. Okay. Oh no. Oh. Oh no, it's. Ugh. Yeah, there you go. There's her noble phantasm. Yep. Ugh. The move. Paradox. True. Oh, damn. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Sage of the forest. Oh. There you go. Noble phantasm, isn't it? 
What was its name? I forgot. Straw. No. Oh no, that's just part of his noble phantasm. There goes Archer. Okay. Wait, how the hell did he go there? Like, wait, what? <laughs> wait a minute, wasn't he outside the... Okay. Oh, there you go. The command spell. Like, I've always wondered what happens to the command spells. Like, I've seen Rizka using so many command spells, but does it get replenished as they come back or something? I think it's probably something like that. Lord Kaldias. Okay. Oh my god. Okay. There you go. Oh, here we go. Wicker man, wicker man. I remember it now. Wow. Ha! It's kind of like Iron Maiden in a way. Not Iron Maiden, Phantom Maiden, sorry. Wow. Wait, he's still... What, what? Yeah, she realizes who it's actually... Like that is Galahad. Yeah, it's there you go. The light is over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hmm.
Oh boy. Here we go. Now Lev is going to. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, Lord Kaldia. There you go. Okay, here we go. In comes the villain. Tsubarashi. <laughs> uh. Okay, here we go. Um, um, oops. Uh. Oh, that's why it. Oh. Oh, wait, I did not. Oh. Oh my god. What is that? Oh. Oh, that's a holy grail. Okay. Son. Damn.
I, f I completely forgot about this part. What the hell? Okay, here we go. Incinerated. Oh. Oh, fucking. Yeah, this single light is going down. Okay. Yeah. Ah. Oh. Okay, we're back. As I said, like, what happens to the command spells? Because I've seen Ritzka using command spell a lot. So... Okay, there he is. Okay, here we go. That's much, isn't it? Yeah.
Yeah. Okay, so here is it starts here. Yeah, the cryptos. Oof. Hmm. Yeah. Well, there you go. Nero, John Dark, Drake. Granddaughter. Wow. Okay, so like a lot of things, as I said, I've forgotten completely about, especially the whole section with Olga and you know, I I also forgot about the whole Medusa's involvement in this and Archer's involvement as well. So this reminded me of a lot of things and. A few, th a lot of things that I really did not understand at that time, I was able to understand now because when I like when everybody started Grand Order, it was like a new thing for them, and they suddenly like you know drop all this information on you, and you kind of try to take it in, but then you eventually forget about that because you don't have a clear understanding of what's happening. So now, like you know, now we're the lost belts. <laughs> we're at the fourth lost belt now. So obviously like after four years of playing, we have a lot better understanding of the whole structure of this, uh, like, you know, this show, this uh, game and what is happening. And like listening to everything from now, it, it really makes you understand what's actually happening and probably a few stuff which you never really understood before. It, it makes sense now because, because you are more proficient in this. And that's what happened. A lot of things I I really did not know that much. I was able to kind of get a kind of a clear picture about. And okay, that's it. Like the whole thing with Cal Diaz and you know a few other things as well. Like what happened to Olga. Now here's one thing. Um, so, so Olga's dead, I think. Like they did not show us what happened, and. Like honestly speaking, I really forgot about Olga. Like I thought that they kind of kept it like a, uh, as far as I remembered, they kept it like a what do you call it, um, like like open ended at what happened to Olga. But now that I see, I'm seeing this, like you know, this episode here, it seems as if she died here. But then why did I have the preconceived notion of that the whole uh, thing with Olga was uh, open ended? Like, yeah, like before watching this, I had the, like, you know, I, I had this type of a thing in my head where 
I always thought that Olga, like, you know, Olga's um, fate was undecided. Like, they kind of kept it open-ended as to what happened to her. But here, after watching this, I can, I can, I can probably tell him that he, she's dead. Like, how else, like, how can she even survive that, you know? And, like, Lev himself explained that his, her uh, body in the um, real world is dead. So... Like, I don't know why I had this thing in my head where I thought that Olga's fate was undecided and it was kept open-ended. Yeah, like a lot of things like I had like a misconceptions about and I kind of thought about it differently. Seeing this, I, I, I'm, I'm thinking about it in a lot of different way now. And... Yeah, okay, so... Like, all, like you know, we, we've already like, you know, played this section and we know what happens here but a few things that i kind of you know like saw and thought after like watching this is that first of all uh like th this part is kind of my memory is kind of failing me um what was marsha's actual like you know like purpose like I, I think i forgot about that oh I, oh yeah i think i remember like they they okay yeah they, they probably made marshu because of uh yeah yeah because of the whole demi servant thing they tried but they failed yeah yeah that's that's yeah i, I kind of remember now that was the main purpose of marsh like they you know she her main reason for existence was like they made her so that they can experiment upon the whole demi servant thing but all this time she has failed but here after the the singularity happens she succeeds she's able to make um contract with galahad and okay so let's uh, go here step by step first of all um now here's another thing Rizka, we i, I think we have barely any information about Rizka. don't don't we like like, I've never thought about it before. Like, we've been playing Fate Grand Order for quite a long time. So, I don't think they ever really did mention anything about Ritska. Where he comes from, who is he? He or she. Like, you know, like Ritska, like, Ritska, like, Gudako and Gudao. And, like, it, the only thing we know is she's from, he's from, you know, from a common family. And that's just it. Like, who is he? Like, you know, who is he related to? Is it someone we know? Or, you know, all the other stuff about him, his personal information. We have no idea. Like, we've, we've, we're at Lost Will 4 now. And in JP's, I'm not sure about JP. Like, did they mention anything about Ritzka after that or not, what not. But we have no information about him. And I think this is probably because, like, Ritzka is like, a, you know, like, it's like a, a, the main character who we are, like, you know, in the game. Like, that's why they probably did not give much uh, attention to Rizka at the beginning, but now he's a pretty big part of the whole story. So, who knows? Maybe in the future we'll get to know more about Rizka because I'm really interested in who he actually is. Is he really like a normal random person, or is he somehow related to something? Like that's what's kind of like, like, like I I'll not be actually surprised if it really does turns turn out that he really is like a normal random person. Like he is no relationship uh, about like you know with, with these type of stuff he is not related to someone that we know um Ritska is just a normal kid who just got roped up into these type of stuff because he was there at the um, like you know at, at that time and when the time during the time when everything was going down he was there that's why Caldius kind of cho chose him so it won't really surprise me here if that really become is the case but who knows and uh, okay anyways and the thing that here marsh says is like you feel human like obviously i can understand what she's by meaning by that she's she's telling that yeah you you have like a human uh, what can i say like um human way of understanding i don't know but like now that i think about it like it really does make sense in a way that she referred to him as human because Marsh himself is not human in any case, which is a little bit different. So is uh, Lev, 
um romani we know now who he is da vinci and all the other characters that we know here and in some way or the other not human except except olga mari but i don't know like maybe like you know maybe that was like a little foreshadow or maybe not maybe that's just something marsh said at that time but yeah anyways okay so everything goes down the whole uh you know like the cryptors they get roped up into this whole situation uh the cryptors were all only be able to be like you know in, put in cry preservation while marsh and ritska gets involved in this whole mess and because ritska was there with marsh at that time holding her hand they somehow formed a contract and as a master and a servant and galhad also made a contract with uh, marsh giving her the demi human uh, demi servant power and uh, so wait a minute like they said something about where is that section they said something about marsh making a contract with a servant who was there and marsh does not know who the servant was so does that mean that galahad did not actually reveal his identity while he was in caldia because otherwise how would it even you know make sense that marsh says that at that time i made a contract with a servant who have who was already here because you know like he was a uh, one of the main priority of this ray shift where is that section like just a sec uh, okay i cannot find it anyways uh i can't okay okay here we go I'm sure you know that Caldia pre pre prepared a servant beforehand in order to resolve this investigation of Singularity F. There you go. You pre they prepared a servant from before. And like right before I died, he offered me the contract. In exchange for giving me the abilities of a heroic spirit and noble phantasm. He wanted me to eliminate the cause of the singularity. Okay, here we go. So, so here's the thing. That means Galhad, like you know, was in Caldia from the beginning. So why were they not able to identify the heroic spirit who made a contract with Marshu? Because as far as I remember, uh, Marsh was able to know the real identity of the servant within her in Babylonia. Oh no, in Cal. No, in Camelot, not Babylonia, in Camelot. So it took so much time. So does this mean that none of them knew who Galahad was? You know, like neither Romani nor Da Vinci, uh, nor like not anyone. Like, so what does that mean? Does, does that mean like Galahad was just there and he kept his identity a secret? And during that time, he made a contract with Mashu and that's why Mashu and no one knew about the actual identity of Galahad. It's probably something like that. Like otherwise, it doesn't make any sense. Like why did they take so long time to actually realize who was the person, uh, who was the servant, who was contracted to Marsh, who fused with Marsh? Anyways, okay, so that was that, and <coughs> okay. Uh, one thing I wanted to check out here is where is that part when uh, Ku Hulin explains about the grail war that's happening here okay um okay um somewhere along the line our holy grail was switched with something else switched i don't know the details myself overnight the town was blanketed with fire <laughs> Humans disappeared. Okay. Okay. Here we can see the silhouettes of the different servants. Um, Saber is obviously Arthur Pendragon Altar. And who are the other servants? Okay. We can see here Emia, Archer. Okay. Uh, Medusa, uh, who is the Lancer here? Yeah. 
So Medusa is a Lancer here, which is kind of understandable because we already have Medusa Lily, who is a Lancer. And uh, okay, who is this rider? He has like some huge armor, like two big horns. Who is this guy? If you guys know who this person is, let me know in the comment section. Barzaka, we all, all we of us knows Barzaka, that's Heracles. And Assassin, all of us knows, that's Hassan. Yeah, there you go. So the only person that at least I don't know here is um, the rider. Hmm. Okay. Another thing here. So this is Fuyuki. Uh, when the Holy Grail War was happening, but this is a, a, a parallel world because we like, you know, we see the servants here who are kind of different in a lot of ways. For example, Kuhulin is a caster here while Medusa is a Lancer. So like, it's kind of like, you know, mixed up because it's a parallel world as far as I can understand. Uh, but obviously there are a few things which are the similar because Arthur Pendragon is a saber here. Uh, Emi is an archer and uh, Heracles is a berserker, that, those are all the all same. Uh, oh, and uh, Hassan is also an assassin here. So that's like, there's few things that are different, few things that are the same. So I think like uh, Kuhulin said something about all the masters died and only the servants are left now. And they are like, you know, like kind of uh, like a, a dark version of themselves. So I'm guessing this singularity also had Shiro, um, Rin, Sakura, all of them as masters here. Like we, we saw Shinji here, didn't we? Yeah, we saw Shinji. So I'm sure of it. That means like Shiro, all of them were here as well, but they died. And it's interesting to see like this is like a battle world of the Fuyuki that we know, knew about. So. Okay. Another thing here is, which is very interesting and which is something that I realize now, um, Gugulin says something about his master. At that time, you know, because I was reacting to it, I wasn't able to properly realize what he was actually trying to say. He, he said something about her master teaching him, uh, uh, his master teaching him about, um, like, you know, the, the, the things that some rooms and stuff like, Okay, I can't find that section. But anyways, I remember what he said there. He said something about his master. Now, at that time, I was not able to realize it. But now that I think about it, it's kind of clear who she, he's talking about. It's, it's uh, Skahat. Now, here's the thing which is kind of funny about. Like, <laughs> like in Lancer form, <laughs> both he and Skadi, uh, not Skadi, sorry, Skahat, both of them are Lancers. And they're master and pupil. We know that. And like, you know, like Skahat taught him everything about, um, you know, like about uh, Kuhulin, everything about the, uh, like, you know, the spear and their master and pupil in that way. And here that we see, um, caster, uh, uh, Kuhulin is a caster and he's referring to his master. Obviously it is Skahat. And we know that Skahat already has a caster form, which is Skadi. So I think he actually was talking about Skadi here because I, I remember, like, you know, like he was doing runes and stuff, which is obviously something that we know from Lost Belt 2 is something that Skadi does, you know, using runes. So it, it really, I, I guess it kind of proves here that at this time as well, like Skadi, which is Skahat, is actually his master. Now, one thing I like, 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 uh, okay, um, Kahat Skadi. Like, uh, what is that? Just a sec. Like, this, these things kind of uh, con confuse me a little bit. Like, um, here's the thing. So, we know Skahat, you know, like who Skahat is and who Kuhulin is, but Skadi. I've already always seen this and I kind of thought about it as well. They always refer to her as Skaha Skadi. So does that mean that like Skadi and Skaha are two different people? So I think they did mention this in Lost Belt 2 and I probably forgot. So that means they actually fuse together. Like, you know, it's like a mixture between them, isn't it? Like Skaha Skadi? Like it is Skaha and at the same time it's Skadi as well. 
So here's the thing that probably means that the Google Hulin we are seeing here as a caster form is also probably mixed with someone. Or I think so at least. So the question here is uh, Skahat Skadi, we know that it's, it's Skahat and Skadi mixed, a mixture of both of them. So who is Kuhulin mixed with here? Or, or maybe he's just a singular entity. You know, it's not that he's mixed with someone, but it is just him. Like, that's kind of interesting to think about because, like, I doubt that it is purely Kuhulin in caster form there because Kuhulin is a lancer. Like, how the hell would he be able to learn magic and stuff? It's probably because he fused with someone, just like how Skahat fused with Skadi to become Skahat Skadi. And I, it always kind of like, you know, like I, I never thought about it before, but now that I'm watching this for again, and like, you know, I'm kind of seeing everything and seeing Kuhulin making like, you know, runes and everything. I'm wondering, why is he a one star? Like, why? He can be a five star, in my opinion. Wait a minute, is he a one star or is he like two star? I forgot about that as well. Um, who will in caster? No, he's a three star. Sorry, sorry. Why the hell am I even saying one star? Just a sec. He's a three star, isn't he? Yeah, he's a three star. Sorry, I'm. I was saying one star, one star from then. Anyways, like, okay, so he's a three star. I don't know. I think he should be a lot like you know like he should be a five star or something because like this really proves like he's his abilities. He was able to defeat um Arthur Alter. Like you know by using his noble phantasm like that. So he's a lot more stronger than we think he is. So yeah, like I don't know. Like I don't know why he's like a three star servant. Uh, but yeah, it really, it, like you know, like what do you call it? Rarity is not. Uh, yeah, rarity is not calculated like that. I guess you know because um, there's like a lot of things actually depend on like you know rarity depends on a lot of things, and yeah, probably because of that. Like who knows? But yeah, anyways, like uh, like. I, I never really thought about Kuhulin Caster as a strong servant, but now that I'm watching this again, I actually realize here that he is pretty damn strong, like immensely strong. Like Skadi is her, his master as far as I could gather, and he uses runes. So yeah, his his talents and his you know power is undoubtedly un, undoubted undoubted. <laughs> I'm sorry. God damn, I can pronounce stuff is definitely one of the best so yeah it, it kind of like made me realize this after watching this again and uh, all right and that was that and then we get to the next part of like you know the fighting like b between emia and them and arthur and you know all of them as well and like then left comes in he talks about the whole thing and says that yeah i am here to actually kill you guys so and then he absorbs uh olga into the galdias and we don't know what the hell happened to her like i think he is, she's dead probably but who knows maybe maybe she's alive i doubt she's alive yeah who am i even kidding i doubt she's alive so like maybe maybe he she's like a part of galdias now you know maybe that's what's happening so it kind of like you know like again this is another weird thing that i've always thought about is like we're at lost well four why did they not mention anything about olga after that like after that after singularity one there's no mention of olga sometimes they kind of like you know mention her but that's just it like we don't even know what the hell like if she is like a part of kaldias now who knows Okay, I think that is it. And like, you know, the, the way they explained everything was also kind of interesting because I totally forgot about what the hell ray shifting was. Like, I remember what ray shifting is, but the intricacies and the, you know, this detailed stuff, it completely slipped my mind. And okay, here it is. Let me read this section again. 
uh, when Roman is talking about left. Um, okay, the former director is the one who constructed the ray shift summoning system. The former director, I, I think that's uh, he's referring to Olga's dad. I forgot his name, but yeah, we, we, we also kind of got a little bit of introduction of Olga Mari in uh, El Meloy case files. Like Mari, Olga Mari was a part of that. So, okay, anyways. And the Atlas Academy provided the spirit on calculation engine to actualize the theory. Okay, so yeah, I need to read this section properly because I, come, I, don't, I don't remember any of this stuff. The former director is the one who constructed the ratio summoning system. Okay. Which is Olga's dad, I think. Um, and the Atlas Academy provided the spirit on calculation engine to actualize the theory. Okay, spirit and calculation engine. So many talented people have come together to make it all possible. Um, okay. Okay, where is the portion that they... Okay, I, I can't find that portion. The way they explain about Sheva. Now, I think the, the, the subtitles was a little bit wrong here. They called it Shiva and like, you know, that's why I was a little bit confused. I was like, like, when did, like, like you know, like I, I didn't remember anything about Shiva here. And then I realized it's not Shiva, it's Sheva she's, they're talking about. The Sheva that we all know. And... Like these, like, you know, these things actually kind of confuse me. Like I, I, like I've, I've, I've seen this a lot, like, you know, these type of, uh, detailed stuff about the summoning and everything, but I don't know why, like the, the kind of are not clear to me still, like what is Sheva? Um, let me check. Like, oh no, not queen of Sheva. I'm talking about the other Sheva. Uh, Sheva. Yeah, Sheba system. Uh, Sheba, there you go. <coughs> Sheba, the near future observational lens. Oh, okay, okay. Invented by Lev Leonard. Oh, Lev, okay, Lev is the one. Oh, that's what they were saying. Like, Lev is the one who made it. Okay, Sheba, that's Sheba. It's a mechanism designed to permit the detailed observation of information represented within Caldia's planetary projection, similar in concept to the environmental observation satellite placed in Earth's orbit. In lieu of closed circuit camera system, Sheva also serves as an integral component of calculated security. Um, okay, so now why is it called Sheva? Like we know Queen of Sheba is like a I think in the, okay, due to sophisticated technology, Sheba displays limited sapiens when it is able to summon the Queen of Sheba. There you go. To the silent singularity using its name as catalyst. Oh. Oh, consequently, when the Queen of Sheba is present in Chaldea, her emotions appear to be synced with the ma machine which reflects when she is under emotional duress. Unknown to Chaldea at first, it is because it's because its true purpose was to act as an observer of the demon god pillars on Goetia's behalf and was programmed to restrain them if any of the pillars attempted to defy Goetia's will. The oh, the queen of Sheba has been summoned not because of her name but because she was only human that Goetia trusted. Okay, it makes a lot of sense now. Like I've already always wondered why was it called Sheba? Okay, it makes sense now, you know, because Solomon and Sheva, the Queen of Sheva. Okay. All right. Anyways, like I kind of want, went on a tangent, but yeah, these things, like you know, these things, I I need to actually sit down, like you know, and actually read all of this. Like I've read this a lot of times, but like you know, like things are a little bit so complicated that most of the things I understand at that moment, but at time goes on, I kind of forget it. Like I don't know why. Like I've I've like I've read a lot about the whole um, uh, what was that? The other things, the Gaia, the uh, a lot of other things as well, which are like you know, um, related to FGO. 
And when I was reading it, I remembered everything. But, but then eventually I kind of forgot. And this, all the time this happens, I think it's probably because they're, they're quite a bit complicated to, they cannot remember like all of these stuff. So yeah, I should probably actually read all of these again. Uh, I'll do that later when I have time because there's a lot of things I can see that like you know like Laplace, Kalias we kind of know about, Sheba, Fate, Trismegistus, Minimusine, Simulator, Seraphix, yeah all these things like so many things to actually like you know know about but yeah like anyways like you know like after watching this i kind of got a little bit of more clear understanding of what was happening because as i said like when i played this game i had no idea what the hell was happening and that's why i forgot about all of the stuff but now that i have a more clear view of what is fate grand order i can understand a lot of stuff now and it, it really freshened my memory and a lot of things that i forgot about it, it's making sense now like you know and I, I kind of remember now like i completely forgot about medusa's involvement in this you know in the first singularity medusa and the archer's involvement in this i completely forgot so yeah that was nice that was a really good um you know it refreshed my memories and it made me realize a few stuff that i never did realize before so yeah that was it so that's it guys so okay next week i'll probably react to this one uh the other tv uh the t uh, the special afraid grand order moonlight ross room and i think there's another ova like whatever stuff there is about fate grand order i'll react to them one by one and after um camelot 2 comes out i'll react to that as well so yeah so that's it guys so thank you guys for watching this was my reaction to fate grand order um the first order and the anime if you guys enjoyed this video be sure to press the like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed as i said i i usually put out one or two uh fgo related videos every week so yeah if you are interested in that definitely subscribe and i'll be linking down my playlist uh my fgo playlist below if you want to check all of my other fgo related content you can just click on it and you'll find everything and yeah and comment down below you know like anything any like extra information if you want to give me and anything that will help make you know stuff a lot more easier for me to understand because as i said like fate grand order is a is, is, like fate franchise in itself has so many things that it, it's very difficult to actually understand each and everything and uh, yeah so any information if you have you can like you know comment down below i'll definitely check them out and uh, yeah so that's it guys so thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys next week with another episode um with another like you know fgo related uh video so until then goodbye and have a nice day